Hello, hello, hello everyone. I'm Dasha Jamison with Red Rock Pastel Society of Nevada and today we're going all the way to Australia to talk to wonderful pastel artist Stacy Clark. I'm going to show several of your pastels. Hello. Just gonna wait a couple of seconds till Stacy will connect. Oh, I see Stacy. I'm just showing your work here. Hello, Susie. I think it's connecting. Hi, Stacy. Just hang on with us. I sent you invitation to join, so hope it will work this time. Hi, MK. hi, hi. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you. Yeah, you too. You too. All the way from. Nevada, yeah? Yes, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's uh... Las Vegas. Good job. We're coming, yeah, we're coming over to the States in June. But, yeah, sadly, Nevada doesn't make the cut. Oh, but I'll see you at IAPS, right? Oh, absolutely. I can't wait for IAPS. It's going to be a brilliant, yeah. I I think we're so excited to um, to see people again, aren't we? I just can't wait. And I've not met most of, you know, the people that I interact with, so it's going to be fantastic. I see uh, Rhonda joined us too. So uh, hi. Hi, <laughs> hi, Rhonda. Hi, hi. So, I have to put my glasses on. So, I'm just going to uh, see. Oh, actually, it's not going to work. So I'm Dasha Jamison, Viva Red Rock Pastel Society of Nevada. Every spring, uh, we hosting member jury web show, and also this year we promoting our online, uh, not just online but offline show in Las Vegas, and we are doing series of those interviews with fantastic artists. So uh, last year when I was doing series of these interviews, Rhonda reached out and she goes like, "How come you never spoke to Stacey?" Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, like oh, I, she's I, so I, sweet. She's yeah, so sweet. She is, and I like I and I start following you on Instagram, and she's on your Patreon. Like I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't make my way to Patreon page yet, but I heard That's fantastic okay. everything. Uh, but fantastic, like everything fantastic about you. So, thank you, thank you. <laughs> So it is, nice. it's, it's very exciting to, um, like, Zoom has been an amazing connector through the last two and a half years, hasn't it? And it's just so nice to now book flights and all the people that we've connected with, with Zoom, we can now, you know, see face to face at IAPS and, and you know, learn and, and um, yeah, socialise with different artists. It's going to be so lovely. I can't wait. Yes, it's going to be fantastic. But uh, may I ask you to show us around? Like, are you in your studio? It's yeah, I am. I am. Now, my studio has two different rooms. 
um, in 2018, I had a studio just in one side. And in 2018, we live where it's quite cold. We live at the top of the Great Dividing Range in um, Australia on the East Coast. And we had a minus 15 night and um, we had a massive flood. And we were down at our daughter's place um, at the time. And uh, the flood bled out for three days in our house. So we came home and our house was destroyed. So I've lost most of my, uh, I lost all bar 11 paintings and that was in 2018 and I've been painting since 2011. So what you see is all from 2018, but I'm happy to take you around. Let me just check. So this is my office space. This is where I do all my book work. This great big pastel tree is full of pastels. Seriously, it's just so bad. I'm such an addict. Um, so every drawer has a colour, which is lovely. And, yes, I'm, uh, I'm so bad. And I always need more. But this is where I teach. This is where I paint. This, I paint on a wall. I don't paint on an easel unless I'm painting with students in my room. I paint directly on the wall. Uh, my husband's a builder, so he just said, let's sacrifice one wall and let you go. And there's my little movable trolley. I just absolutely love this section of my, um, of my studio. And then my very unorganised Blue Earth, which I know most artists would be like, oh, my God, they're so dirty. But I know where each of them, each of them is. This is my hanging, this is my hanging system. So I, this used to be two bedrooms and my husband cut the wardrobes out and I now hang uh, where the wardrobes are. I hang each on a coat hanger. Can you see that? Oh, wow. With glassine is, in this, between. Wow, this is the neatest idea i ever seen. And so. uh, with glassine and then each of them, like I just put them into categories. So I've got tulips, I've got fish, I've got this, I've got that. So if something sells, oh I can just I can just go, haha, that's where that one is. So yeah, that's my. I was going to clean yesterday, but you know, I just thought, nah. Um, I painted instead, <laughs> and that's just all my, you know, your books over the years, all the junk uh, that you have. And then in here, uh, this is where I teach. So I have like a little spot here where I set up my still life uh, with lighting and whatnot. And then this is just hey, some of my work around the walls, yeah. So this is where all the fun happens when we do face-to-face. -face. And I also have a million other, I can't help myself with dried flowers. I always, always, always um, keep everything that I've, I'm so bad. <laughs> But I, yeah, it's just, a, it's my happiest place in the whole world right here. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty lucky to, um, pretty lucky to have this, hi, <laughs> pretty lucky to have this little space. Yeah. No, thank you for showing us around. Uh, what's the weather like outside? Is it? Um, well, we live in the mountains, so it's a little bit um, frosty outside. I should just show you my gorgeous garden out there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I have the most beautiful garden that keeps me inspired every day. So outside of my yeah, outside of my studio, um, most of the flowers that you'll see in my bouquets at the moment, they're all straight from the garden. Oh, this is fantastic. And uh, Susie say, uh, you wonderful artist, fabulous idea, but cell paintings are difficult to store. Uh, they can be tricky. And uh, thank you again for sharing. Uh, yeah, yeah last... that's, that's fine. I think um, like necessity is the, is the thing that makes you think outside the square, isn't it? Like um, Gavin came up with, my husband's a builder, and he came up with that idea. And he's like, well, just, you know, use these. But they're perfect. The, the, the little clippers don't mark anything outside what you're going to frame anyway so i've never had any problems with them and i just store them between glassine paper which is fantastic yes and uh, i i hope i read your name correctly um, 
Vanita says, love your idea on how to hang the pastel paintings and uh, the storage drawers. So organization of a studio can be very important aspect of your creative process. So you need to be comfortable to create, right? Absolutely. And I think too, you've got to, for me anyway, I don't have to have things perfectly clean to paint. In fact, I think the more you've just almost let go um, outside of the studio, I'm super tidy, super, you know, I like things where they go and, you know, I'm very particular. But within the studio, I've let myself over the years, I've allowed myself to have a the mess you know and it's it's almost part of letting go and being free and I guess that's what when we step up to the studio it's it, up to the easel or up to the wall um you can you can just let go it doesn't matter whether your pastels are in order and they're clean and they're this and then that just step up and have a go it's the, it's the most important most freeing thing and it, the world as it is at the moment oh my gosh don't we need that space just to whoop, relax and uh, thank you for sharing and to all artists out there who are uh, very tight and very particular but extra freedom like you got permission from Steffi. You Absolutely. can be made. <laughs> yeah, you, you can be made <laughs> and if you if you are super particular and you'd like to come and clean, my blue earth needs some attention. <laughs> no uh, problem. Thank you so much for that. And um I know I know you on Patreon. So may may I ask you, do you um have any lessons on studio organization? Because like I saw you have a lot of things to teach. Like are there a lesson on that too? Uh, a lesson on sorry, I kind of uh, le uh, a lesson on uh, studio organization. Do you have a lesson about? No, that? look, I haven't. I haven't really gone into that. I've only been on Patreon for two years, and um. It, I, if it wasn't for my daughter, Sophie, I probably wouldn't be on there at all. She was like, she just kept saying, mom, you have to, you have to share what you've got. You've got to, you know, people want to know about how your process is. And so for a long time, I was just like, well, I can show you what I do, but I don't really know how to do it. So I was very, I was not confident to, to share because what have I got to add? You know, I'm just, I'm self-taught. I, um, I just go my own way and I find my own way, which I think is so, so important for each of us to find our artistic voice. It's also very important to have guidance through that. But no, as, I've, as I'm coming, going through um, Patreon and, you know, becoming a lot more comfortable with um, teaching, I think now definitely uh, I should do some classes on, yeah, organization stepping up you know and I suppose I've done a few uh Dasha just in so much as really you don't need the best of everything you don't need the great fantastic um easels all you need like I keep all my little pastels in yogurt pots I re we recycle everything you don't need big fancy everything's so you all you need is a love of painting and you seriously just need to to use what you have you don't need all the values I've got you just you can do it with 12 pastels if you've got the love of, of art and I I really um when I first started, and even now on my easels, I use the same board that my husband cut me from a big tile, you know, a tile display board. I still use that. I, I pin up, if you've got a wall, you can do this. You know, I pin up a piece of cardboard and a piece of phone call board and you've got an easel. That's a great idea. I... Yeah. I saw some artists using that and I actually have a wall easel myself. One Las Vegas artist uh, okay. uh, brought it. And Rhonda is uh, uh, giving shout out to her favorite pastels, uh, eggplants. <laughs> <laughs> well, Absolutely. Like, uh, you, anybody, you can... anybody who's on my Patreon will know there are three pastels that I are in every single painting that I do. So I love I love the darks. You have to if you want your paintings to work, to to my way of thinking, and this is just my humble opinion, um, you've got to have darks, but you've got to have a variety of darks. So Sennelier one seven nine, which is the deepest darkest black green, um, four six three, which is my magic blue, and then Terry 
Terry Ludwig, a massive shout out. But I think every um, every artist, every soft pastel artist couldn't go past an eggplant. And I buy them en masse. I really do. I I feel like I just eat them some days. They go, I go through them so quickly. Uh, that, that's so true. And it's uh, one of their best sellers. So uh, yeah. they, do, they do sell out of it. And like at IAPS, how many empty suitcases are you bringing? Yeah, oh, well, I'm just going to wear one set of clothes and then the rest will just be full of pastels. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I know I'm you. yeah I'm lucky it's summer so I don't have to bring jumpers when we come <laughs> oh, that's that's so funny thank you for sharing that and um you keep saying what you're just starting it's your humble opinion but uh when you look at your paintings they're so free uh so energetic and uh, totally you. beautiful so um can you tell us about your artistic journey? So uh, how did you start with pastel? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I started in 2011. In 2011, um, I, every year I set myself a New Year's resolution and I decided for no particular reason that I liked the look of watercolour. So I thought I'd have a little go at watercolour and I went to the library, bought a little set of watercolours, sat down and started, and I've uh, no artistic ability, no drawing, no, as a child, you know, I was not an artist at all, never any interest in it. Um, I've always been super creative with, um, um, you know, quilting and sewing and home decorating and things like that, always. Um, creative with colour, definitely, um, and even fashion and that sort of stuff. And then I, I did watercolour and I was quite happy with, you know, what I was producing, quite happy with that. And then um, in, two, in November 2011, I went to a Picasso exhibition down in Sydney at the National Gallery in Sydney, and um, I was really taken by one of his very early works and it was just a, a grey jug with, it was a still life, a grey jug with apples, just very muted but very beautiful. And I was so incredibly moved by this painting that I just thought, oh, my gosh, I really have to go and um, I need to paint. So I Googled, I walked out of the exhibition and I um I Googled the closest art shop and I walked in there and I don't know the na lady's name, but I can say I, if I could find her, I would thank her. Um, she, I said to her, look, I, I've got two hours to kill. I was waiting for my daughter to finish work. And I said, uh, I need just something that I can paint with, but I've no drying time. I don't have any time for, you know, wet, a wet um, medium. And I'd never, honestly, I had never heard of soft pastels. And she handed me, and I have them to this very day, she handed me these dear little set of pastels. And it, yeah, I was so happy. And I just sat in the park and I just basically copied what he, yeah, what he did. And anyway, it was just so beautiful. And I really loved it. I so enjoyed it. And yeah, so the addiction began. Wow, that's an amazing story. Yeah, and then I just squirreled myself away and just decided what I wanted to, what I wanted my art to look like. And I guess I'm super inspired by the um, 17th century Dutch artists. You know the the beautiful florals, the the still life. That I love that, but I don't have the patience um, for hyperrealism. I just don't have the patience. And when I first started, I was super time poor. I was a practice manager for a very busy eye surgeon. And so I was working from seven till seven. So my art hours were very, very small. So I think it was, I think the way that I paint, the directness that I paint with was born you know, partly out of being so time poor, but also I, I didn't want that. I wanted it to be my expression of what I was seeing too. So I loved, you know, and it was trial and error. Trust me, I did a lot. I've, I've got a lot of paintings. I had a lot of paintings that need to be reused. And I still do today. You know, every time I step up, there's always, you know, there's always a few that go astray, isn't there? So... <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, I, um, I guess uh, I, I started with soft pastels and then in 2015, my husband said to me, you know, do you want to go and have a lesson somewhere? Do you want to go and have a lesson? So he said, you should find an artist that you really love. So I said, yeah, yeah no worries, I'll find someone. So I did a bit of Google searching and actually I found a lady on, um, I found a lady on in France on Facebook, Mary France Osterhof, and she is a very dear friend of mine now. Um, and I said to my husband, look, I have found someone. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, where, where, where are they? And I said, oh, she's in the south of France. So I'll have to go over there for a month. <laughs> I took, I packed myself up, packed my pastel box up and off I went to France for two weeks and I painted with her for two weeks. And that's the one and only lesson in pastels that I've had. Well, you had a few more on Zooms with Red Rock pastels to take. Oh, yes, 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 that is true. Yes, I have. That is true. <laughs> yeah, I, that's, have. I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like that's my first learning. Yeah, that was my first lesson. That's correct. Tony, Tony Elaine and Corey Pitkin, I so enjoyed. I, I love that. I need to do more. It's just that I, I need to be not so tired because I've got to do them in the middle of the night. <laughs> Yes, uh, time difference has been challenging, but we do record and uh, we're going to release several lessons. Oh, because... perfect. Yeah, so perfect. That's, that's, a, that's a great idea. A great idea. Yeah, so you can uh, enjoy it in your own time and everything. Yeah. So, but that was always fun having you and like, you know, what? that's the commitment and dedication. If somebody gets up at like 2 a.m. in the morning and has a attitude like you do like <laughs> hey, it means like you have no right to complain you know like yeah. you just <laughs> no you well know. I mean if you love art you love art don't you you really can't help it it's just, just the way it is <gasps> But uh, that's so inspiring and so fantastic. Like, uh, go Thank to you. France for two weeks, uh, get up at 2 a.m. That's the commitment, you know, and uh, looking forward to seeing you at Apps. Um, and you have to ask you, like, we talked about your favorite dark, but uh, if you have to go to, like, deserted island on a painting trip and you can take only one or two brands of pastel and one okay. surface to paint on like what would you take okay um pastel mat is my true love like i i pretty much feel like pastel mat and i gel nicely i love the way that it works with my with my style of painting having said that there's a new kid on the block and lux archival has added for me another dimension of texture so I'm I would be torn between pastel mat and Lux archival um, and both of them I'm, I'm doing stuff on patreon at the moment for April about repurposing both of them like if, if you do a painting and it's not great then yeah I I would go both of those because yeah. I could just wash them off in the seawater and start again if I was on the island um, and yeah the, the pastel brands Without a doubt, it would have to be Sennelier and Terry Ludwig. Two great ones. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you're going mostly soft pastels, like soft as soft. Uh, Absolutely. And... I, can, I can pretty much do without the hard pastels. Um, I, I, liked, I like the hard pastels and I'm starting to incorporate them more, um, like new pastel, Prisma colour, you know, those sort of ones. Um, because with the with the Ludwigs and with the Sennelier, you can still get those super fine lines, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so no, you... I think yeah, I think those two. If I had to, but I don't want to choose because I love them all. Yes, and you always need more, right? Absolutely, and yet I don't. I've got enough pastels to last me six lifetimes, but I'm still looking at buying new ones. So. As we all do, like I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's Martin, an addiction. Have addiction to pastels, like we want to know. Sorry, uh, I'm just uh, talking to our viewers. We have people who are watching. Oh live, yes, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. Like, uh, if you have an addiction to pastels, you can press little hearts. Yeah, to let press us this know. button. <laughs> press this button. Yeah. Um, 
uh, Steffi mentioned Pastel Mat by Claire Fontaine and also by uh, Lux Archival. It's, I believe, uh, English paper and oh, it's, uh, it's amazing. And I've I've actually bought a roll of it, so it, you know I could, I've got the option to to do lovely, really big pieces on it as well. So as you said that, and uh, I see a lot of hearts coming our way. Thank you guys, you're awesome, and thank you for everyone for watching us live. So after the end of this interview, please uh, like it, uh, leave a comment for me and Stacey, so we're going to do more. And follow both Red Rock and Steffi Clark uh, here on Instagram and the all across the platform. So uh, find us, join us, and like we're gonna keep you uh, pastelling. So Absolutely. thank you, <laughs> uh, thank you. And um, I lost my thought. I had a brilliant one. So <laughs> <laughs> don't you hate that when that happens? <laughs> <laughs> I know, like I went on a commercial break and I like I Yeah, so commercial much... break. <laughs> yeah, the kettle on. I know, it's the worst feeling. I went on a commercial break and I lost it. Oh my gosh. Uh <laughs> lovely to see and hear you say this, Susie say. Uh, uh Susie, like... thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm uh, glad we're all the same. I yeah, I have moments where I think now oh, what was I saying? Oh uh, oh my gosh, I am like It's a terrible thing. Like, but like, the the takeaway is that there's going to be amazing tutors at IAPS and it's a perfect opportunity to get together and really enjoy, um, you know, conversing with one another but also gleaning, gleaning information off one another. You know, you can help me, I can help you. And it's the, the tutors at IAPS are amazing. They are incredible. The range of classes and uh, also a candy shop as they call it right so we're looking uh, forward i see uh, celine uh joined us hi celine we saw each other in person in new york and also at the previous ifs uh, where oh. in new mexico albuquerque a red rock member and uh, fantastic artist so um let's talk about shows you know like at a certain point like your husband or your friends uh, start telling you your art is good you need to <laughs> you need to show it somewhere like, I know. How, uh, share your experience how was it with you like uh, how did you enter your first competition if you ever did like i uh, entered i entered my first um my first uh, sh competition um uh, because my franz osterhoff said to me She's part of the Pastel Guild of Europe, which I am also a member. And I, I, I get lazy. More than anything, I get lazy and I just don't enter them. I need to give myself more time to actually sit at the computer and, and, and do my paperwork rather than painting and teaching at this point. Um, but, yeah, she said to me, you need to enter this, um, this competition. So I did it under duress. I did do it because it's, to me, I just... I'm in my studio in the middle of Armidale, you know, freezing cold in the winter, and I just squirrel myself away and I paint. I love to paint. But, yeah, I, I entered it and I came second. And I must say it was really thrilling for to get that recognition. It really was lovely. And I've had a couple of exhibitions in France and I have another one. I'm part of an international um, pastoral exhibition down in Perigord in July, which I'll be demonstrating at. So if there's any French people, which I doubt there will be, <laughs> I doubt there will be because it's midnight over there. Um, yeah, I'll be a, um, a part of an exhibition over there. But I am also going to travel across the US. Um, I haven't organised to do any workshops, but if anybody wants workshops and I'm in the towns that they're in on those days, I'm happy to fit them in. Well, um, we didn't we didn't talk about it because we were putting our exhibition. What you actually during and we finally finalized days with a gallery. So our exhibition is actually from uh, June 15th to July 1st in Las Vegas. So if there is a point what you may want to do reroute, we can think of something like before or after I have uh, yeah. something fantastic. So I'll, I remember about you and uh, 
we're yeah. going to talk more. So if uh, there okay. is some room for that, routing. But yeah, maybe my maybe my mid New Year's resolution might be just to enter more competitions. But yeah, I need I probably need to do that a little more. But um it's more being lazy than anything else. If I had somebody I could outsource it to, that would be great. So usually so, yeah, usually yeah. my daughter Sophie does all this sort of stuff, but she's on baby number 4, so she's got 3 under 4. So we oh. yeah, I've got to limit what I give to her at the moment. But yeah, so, it's yeah, I'm going to enter. Yeah, I'm going to enter. I'm going to make sure I do that. I will enter a few more. But um, I've been approached to, uh, I've been in a magazine in France as well. Um, the, um, oh, don't you hate that now? I've just forgotten the name of it. Yeah. You are anyway. so amazing, Stacey. Yeah. <laughs> I can't uh, remember and the name. Say, and say, I can so relate to your comment about preferring to paint rather than bothering with computer stuff to enter competition well that's very understandable but we have two shows coming one online one offline uh yep. shows have been this year actually did a great deal for artists who would rather spend their time in a studio versus at a computer and yes. now you need to do two less of the steps to enter any show so now all you need is just to photograph your work really good. So like yes. that's what you're happy with. And just upload it, like one click upload yep. basically. You don't need to resize it. We used to have certain rules for different websites. Yeah. Uh, so now everything handled on the back end. You just need to take very good shot. No worry how to rename it. It can be like whatever your phone or your camera card naming it. So yeah. that's Pretty great news from Show Submit and very so okay, many ladies. So, so if I do it, everybody else has to do it. There we go. I'll make a <laughs> promise. If I upload so, it, then we'll... Uh, pl pledging to be with dusty fingers, like, should I put dust Absolutely. On I love that. Like, I, I have that um, Terry Ludwig car, so I'm <laughs> pledging to enter. Our uh, good job. Yeah, uh, well, I don't have one, but I certainly have a Terry Ludwig. So there we are. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll make sure I do it. I'm stepping yeah. up to paint the stuff this morning, so I will definitely do it. Well, and you as a, like, I mean, doing it on camera seems awkward, but I did approach you in an email too. So uh, you as a juror for our offline show, actually eligible to enter our online show. So like you can be as an artist entering our online show and yeah. uh, compete for the prizes and after that you're just gonna put another hat on of an artist like what you're wearing <laughs> so graciously and enter our theme show what's gonna be okay in I, I, in Las yeah Vegas. i will and, do and i have i've um i juried i was very very uh honored to jura jura a show for the pastoral society of north carolina as well which i thought was lovely um, and I really enjoyed that process. I really enjoyed the process. So, so any any advice from this um, standpoint, like if you're an artist and you choosing what to enter, what to not enter, like uh, how should you, uh, I mean, more looking not for the recipe, right? More about no. mental, mental state, like what you should be in when you're entering the online competition. Like, can you share maybe a piece of your advice? I think, I think the most important thing for me is paint from the heart. Paint, every painting I do comes from deep within me. So um, paint, for, paint what you love. Don't paint for anyone else. Just paint for yourself. And I think, I think the joy comes out. So, um, you know, you see a lot of beach scenes and landscapes. I'm never going to be a landscape painter, I can tell you, um, because flowers are, are what bloom within me. It's just I'm a gardener. I'm a, yeah, it's paint what you love and really, really enjoy, like put it out there. I, and I'm, I, you know, I'm sort of don't do as I do, do as I say. Um, exactly. I exactly. know. <laughs> I really have to, I really have to, yeah, step up. But I, I'm probably, you know, a typical Australian where we all think we're not good enough. Uh, so I, I need a little bit I, more. I, I, I know. I, 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 I have 
have not heard that expression yet. So like, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. We have actually a team member, Christine Bowman, down from San Diego, and she is Australian. She is going to be volunteering at IAPS. Uh, yep. I haven't heard that. So that's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, we we yeah we don't sort of promote ourselves too much. Where um, I think it's just a very Australian thing to do. That yeah, we just yeah. I don't know. That's just who I am. <laughs> well, I mean, you, it's it's uh, not that I don't the, think it's not that I don't think my art or... is good enough because it is. It's lovely. I'm very happy with the pieces. I wouldn't put them out there if I wasn't happy with them. So I am happy with them. But I'm growing and learning all, every day. Like I I looked at a blossom. Um, you know how your Facebook memories pop up. I looked at a blossom. Um, painting that I did last year and I've just finished one for Patreon and they're so different and I'm like that's so good because you know every day I step up and I learn I'm never going to be I will be a 90 year old woman still learning how to work a pastel I hope I hope <laughs> so yeah no that's a great spirit and great advice to paint from the heart and uh, yeah. think you're good enough and absolutely if you have something uh, some light to share from within you please do because we all can use more light right now and Hugo saying love your work thank you Hugo you watched our previous interview uh, with Carol Peebles so thank you nice to see you again and guys uh, we're doing series of interviews so um, on the eighth we're going to talk to Corey Pitkin. It will be oh, our perfect. third interview. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. If you well, I highly do. recommend, highly recommend Corey Pitkin because I'm no, I am no, um, you know, outside of flowers, I'm not the greatest artist, but He's, you, are, um, you are the greatest. You just like flowers. <laughs> so like, uh, let, let's work on your mindset. Like right I reckon. <laughs> no, but what I was going to say is I did a... Um, I did a portrait uh, workshop with you guys through Red Rock with yeah. Corey and I was absolutely blown away by what I produced with, under his um, tutory. He was amazing. So really, really good. He is very kind and very patient. So uh, yeah. we, we're going to release a couple of lessons with him, like this Fantastic. week, hopefully. And uh, if you missed his live workshops, they will be a recording by, uh, like, that's something we are really looking forward to. I recommend them. <laughs> so, Having yeah, done them, I recommend them. I can't wait to meet everybody. It's going to be so lovely to see everybody, share a yeah. drink with everyone, and, yeah, have a great yeah. time. It's a great family reunion. So looking forward to seeing you in June at IAPS. Guys, if you are coming to IAPS, or like we have a lot of people like I see a lot of new names who may be not following Red Rock, uh, who are following Steffi, but um, IAPS, uh, it's abbreviation and like in US we do love abbreviations. It's International Association of Pastel Societies. So like where is Red Rock Pastel Society, where is Artists Guild of Europe, where is like many, many great pastel societies. And uh, IAPS hosting convention where all the societies and their members are coming all together to celebrate their love to the pastel medium. So this year it's taken part in late June in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, and it's going to be five days of pastel party. During that party, uh, they are scheduled a lot of fantastic workshops and demos yeah. with uh, artists from all over the world and yeah. they will be teaching there and there are also going to be a lot of fun activities for everybody to enjoy and also several uh, pastel competitions uh, what are taking place between masters and uh, uh, pastelists of all levels what you had a chance to enter so that's actually like I, I don't know like hope there are no slapping, but it's like an Oscars of uh, yeah. myself. So, <laughs> an Oscars. Uh, I must get a frock out. <laughs> I must bring a fancy frock. <laughs> well, you, you and Tony Elaine should wear frocks. 
<laughs> Absolutely. I look. I'm. I just can't wait. It's going to be. I'm one for a really good chat. Like I. I um, just before COVID um, hit Australia. Um, I resigned from my job of 13 years uh, just to to become a full time artist. So it was a massive step. But we kind of knew something, you know, something not, I didn't realise it was going to be a pandemic, but we knew a nasty, a nasty virus was coming through. So I resigned to get out of the medical profession and became an artist. And I tell you what, I have never been so busy as I have been in those two years, but I have met some of the most amazing people on Zoom yourself included and mm -hmm. I yeah absolutely open up the world so I can get up in the middle of the night and do workshops with you know with you guys so but for me the, it will be like the Oscars where I can meet all these amazing people and my husband is coming with me when we travel in June and then he goes home in early July and I go over to France to to um well just Shame. have three weeks. Just have three weeks to relax in France. I love France. We usually go once a year, and oh, it's been so long. It's been a year, three years yesterday since I flew out to France. That's so a, I'm so that's looking that's forward to this. Yeah, to this great big pastel party. Well, looking forward to it too. I guess we should do a countdown, but we have already. Count, uh, too many countdowns for the too many countdowns yeah, yeah. too early yeah, for a I countdown know, like, i'm not ready uh, like <laughs> don't gonna freak you out but if you haven't made plans to go to our apps uh reach out ask your questions there will be a great party if you were to party you can if you were to learn you can too and yeah. i see no reason why you cannot do both so, Not exactly, uh, exactly. And I think there's, um, you know, I, I think there's still workshops available as well. I know a couple. Yeah. I, I think I'm doing two demonstrations, one one workshop. I've got I've got the Pastel Expo in Australia as well coming up in June. Uh, oh, sorry, in August, in, September, August, okay. September. Our big Pastel Expo, which is like the equivalent of um, yeah. IAPS, but for Australia and New Zealand. And I'm doing, uh, we've added an, another workshop there for me as well because one sold out very quickly. So there are, if you are Australian and you want to go to Caloundra for the Pastel Expo, it will be the, um, yeah, the equivalent of the Oscars in Australia for pastel wow. artists. <laughs> and there's That's amazing cool. tutorialists. So like there's so many good artists. I'm just one of, I'm one of them, but there's millions better than me. But well, not better than me. You know, you're, so, you're like, I know, it, I know. It's really amazing, but different artists. So like, a lot of know, amazing artists. Absolutely. A lot of, a lot of People amazing. that can paint waves where I can't paint waves. People that can do amazing, um, you know, landscapes. There's brilliant, brilliant stuff going to be available. Absolutely. That so, like Dasha, you should pop across to Australia. Come over. I, I should. I should. I've never been. I never <laughs> haven't been, you? So. No, I, I haven't. So it's, it's uh, look. It's only a packed lunch away. Twenty four <laughs> hours. Twenty four yeah. hours, and you'll be here. <laughs> well, why not? You know, but why I'll not? Pro I, I'll probably gonna do pit stop in France. Just. No, just you don't need to go to France after the New Mexico. So it's just like everybody uh, needs to go to France. Exactly, and like we have a 2022 figure out. So <laughs> like yeah, that's... and it's lovely that everybody's moving around too. It's I think it's fantastic that we can all start. We can all start planning again because our lives have been on hold for a couple of. But thank goodness we are able to. Um, yeah, we're able to still connect through our art and through pastel societies that do bring us together and, and let us, um, you know, create together by, by you know, your hard work, by bringing different artists to the party and then sharing that party, which is really, really important because some people, especially with COVID, but some people, their only um, entry into the outside world is through art and that's super important. That's true, Liz, and uh, all hope for safe uh, transition into real world. So yes, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> uh,
Thank you so, so much, guys. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for all your kind comments. I uh, appreciate you. Thank you, Steffi, for getting up so early. Uh, no, for, my pleasure. Me, for, my pleasure. For the live chat. And uh, stay tuned where there will be an announcement about our upcoming interview. And uh, there is a lot of information about our shows. But if you still have some questions, uh, please do not hesitate to ask. Uh, we will be happy to answer them so hope to see you soon on zoom yeah. and uh, in june in person thank you Stevie. thank you guys no thank problem you. thank you Joshua. thank you everyone thank bye -bye. you guys bye bye, bye. bye.